Welcome to Bloomington Living Hope Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Scott Spaulding. We meet today in the name of God. He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray with me. In preparation to hear your word, Lord, we come to you with humble hearts. We confess our sins to you. We believe that Jesus has won forgiveness for us before you. We desire to hear what you have to say to us today. Open our hearts, open our minds, and help us to put your word into practice. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The word of God we're going to talk about today is... Uh, Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. But the Lord said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will show forth your praise. Amen. Most of us uh, know the song, Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Our Lord says to us in his word that you and I are, are weak, but he also tells us that through him we are strong, and that's what we're going to talk about today. There's a couple of ways in which you and I truly are weak we're weak in that we were born sinful. We have our imperfections and our, our limitations. We know our sin. We know our limitations and our imperfections. And thank you, Adam and Eve, for giving us the gift that keeps on giving. We're also weak in that on our own, you and I can't do anything to save ourselves and to reconcile ourselves to God. I'll let God speak to this. Uh, God says through the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 3, this is verses 10 through 12, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. And this is one of many passages in Scripture that talk about how you and I can't do anything to, to earn God's forgiveness or to be reconciled with Him. But then in chapter 5 of Romans, the Apostle Paul continues by saying, this is starting at verse 6, you see at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Since we are the, the reconciled and redeemed children of God, God has also empowered us now to live our lives the way he wants us to. We can't do that on our own. Uh, by nature, we want nothing to do with God. We don't want to believe in God. We don't want to trust God. We don't want to follow God. We don't want to obey God. 
But when God the Holy Spirit came to us and made his home in us and blessed us with faith either through the sacrament of baptism or through the word of God, the Spirit now enabled us and empowered us to live our lives the way God wants us to. And he doesn't leave us alone to do this. The Spirit lives in us and we need to cooperate with him in living our lives in a godly way. So you and I, in these ways, are, are weak, but through God, we are strong. Now that leads us to the Apostle Paul and our text. I, I'd like to read uh, the text again to you. But the Lord said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The Apostle Paul, by nature, was weak too. He had his sins, he had his imperfections, and then he shares with us a list of other things that he experienced in life. He talks about having insults and hardships and persecutions and, and in difficulties. But in all these things, God cared for the Apostle Paul. Paul experienced the grace of God even in all his weaknesses. The Lord said to him, and certainly expressed these words in action, my grace is sufficient for you. You and I really are no different than the Apostle Paul. We have our sins, we have our weaknesses, we have our limitations, and maybe we've even, even experienced some of the things that Paul did, like insults and hardships and, and persecutions and, and difficulties. But through all these things, God has also cared for us. We have experienced the grace of God. We've experienced these words where God says, my grace is sufficient for you. Then God goes on to say, for my power is made perfect in weakness. We certainly see God expressing his power uh, through the Apostle Paul. The immediate context uh, of these words is where Paul had, had gone to God and asked God to remove what he called his thorn in the flesh. We've talked about this before. Paul either suffered from epilepsy or he had problems with his eyes. But Paul figured that if God were to remove this from him, this thorn in the flesh, he could really go great guns for God because he wouldn't have that weakness or limitation. But God said to him, no, you're con you'll continue to have this uh, thorn in the flesh, this, this weakness, this limitation. And he says, I'm going to express my power in your weakness. And God certainly did that. As we look at the, the work of the Apostle Paul that God did through him, God used Paul to spread the gospel and established churches in Asia Minor, in Greece, and even to Rome. Now, you and I are very similar to the Apostle Paul in that God often expresses his power in our weakness and in our limitations as well. Here's a couple of examples. Take a child, for example. Now, we would view a child, in a sense, to be weak. What, what things can God do through a child? I was talking to a mom who told me that uh, she was having a conversation with her daughter who was in elementary school. Her daughter had been playing with a friend and mom asked her daughter what they were doing. And the little girl told her mom that she had uh, found some of her Bible study materials from school and that she was teaching her friend a lesson from the Bible. And the scriptures tell us that, that God's word is powerful and effective. And so God was expressing his power through a child whom we considered to be weak. On the other end of life, you may be elderly, you may be frail, and you might be thinking to yourself, what in the world can I do for God? One thing you can do is pray. And we know that prayer is powerful 
and effective. Just recently, in, in our family of faith here at Bloomington Living Hope, there have been a, a couple of situations and circumstances that people were going through that, humanly speaking, I thought, this is not going to turn out well. But these people prayed, and people prayed for them, prayed for them through our, our prayer chain. And things, things were resolved in a far more positive way than I ever thought they could be. But God was using the power of prayer to express his power in resolving these kinds of things in the pe lives of people who are going through some, some difficulties. To tie this all together, I want to tell you a story. And this is part of my story. Those of you who know me know that about 10 years ago, uh, I had uh, a stent put in because I was having heart issues. But I don't know if I've, I've told you the whole story about my heart situation. One day I was uh, mowing the lawn and I started to feel pressure here uh, in my chest. I stopped and the pressure went away. That had happened a couple of times. Now, this was just before my family and I were planning to go on vacation to Germany for two weeks. And this is a trip that you as a congregation had given to me in celebrating my, my 25th anniversary. And I was not going to miss this trip. So I didn't tell anybody about the, uh, the pressure in my chest that I was feeling. We went to Germany, and for two weeks, we climbed mountains. And the whole two weeks we were there, I didn't have any issues or any symptoms as well. And I truly believe during those two weeks, I was experiencing the grace of God as he was taking care of me. We got back and I mowed the lawn. And the very first time I did that again, I felt the pressure. And then a few days later, I was at church preparing for worship and I wasn't doing anything. And I felt that, that same pressure as well. So I went in and had it checked out. And my doctor told me that I had a blockage, almost a complete blockage in my main left artery, which is what they call the widow maker. He told me that the number one symptom for what I had is dying. But God took care of me, even though I had this, this very, very serious heart issue. The doctor said it could be resolved with a stent. So he told me that, and then that same day, my family left to go home, and I was by myself in the hospital. And I have to admit to you that I was apprehensive and a little bit scared. But I had a roommate. And after my family had left, he pulled back the curtain between the two of us. And he introduced himself. And he said, I, I apologize for, for uh, listening to what you and your family were talking about. But it sounds like you're going to have a stent to put in tomorrow. He asked me, did you ever have one of those put in before? And I said, no, this is my first time. And he told me, well, I've had a couple of heart attacks. And I have five or six stents put in. And it's a pretty simple process. And you're going to be just fine. I believe that God used that man and his weakness in a very powerful way to quell some of my fears and to encourage me. And now, since that time over the past 10 years, I've been able to do the same. I've been able to talk with people who have had heart issues or were going through heart issues. And because of my experience, my weakness, my limitation because of my heart situation, I was able to, to encourage and support other people who are going through the same thing. And so God is using me just like that, that other man to express his power to me and to others in our weaknesses. God is, is right when he says that you and I are weak. By nature, we're sinful. There's nothing we can do on our own to be reconciled to God. On our own, we can't do anything uh, to, to honor God or glorify God or serve God. But God says to us, through me, you are strong. He says to us, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. So let's respond to that the same way the Apostle Paul did when he said, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. 
That is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So watch for God to make use of you in your weaknesses and limitations to be a help and benefit to somebody else. Just as the Apostle Paul was in serving his Lord and just as I was able to do that. So let's all partner with God in uh, letting God use his power through our weaknesses. Let's pray. Lord, we admit that on our own we would be spiritually weak, but through you we are strong. We are reconciled to you through Christ. We know and believe that the Holy Spirit lives in us. Help us to partner with him in serving you. We praise you that in our weakness you express your grace to us. We praise that in our weakness you express your power in using us for your good purposes. Help us by your grace and power to be strong. We also pray for those who are sick, those who are fearful, those who are troubled, those who are lonely, those who are experiencing injustice, those who are out of work, those who are sad, and those who are facing difficulties in life. Show them your grace in their unique circumstances. Let them see your power in their weakness. And now let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive with a believing heart the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.